All right, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at a distance joint 2D, which is something that you would use to make a pendulum. So think of a clock, the pendulum that swings to keep track of the seconds. Think of a chain chomp from Mario. Think of um, a bicycle with the two wheels. That's actually a pendulum that's between those two, but it's set to be fixed. Anything like that, you're gonna use a distance joint 2D to make. <laughs> So in my game here, I have a couple of things set up already. So we can hit play and I just have a player that follows my mouse and then an enemy that if I collide with it, it sends me back to start. Basically it just refreshes the scene. This stuff you guys can build on your own. You don't have to watch me do it. It's part of the color bump tutorial if you're enrolled in Hackington's. All right, so we're gonna take our enemy here and we're gonna add a distance joint 2D component to it. So I just add component, I type in distance joint and I choose 2D. Now this will default to connecting it to the closest game object. But what we can do is that circle, we can actually move it. And this is the top part of the pendulum. So you think of this is the thing, this is the pole that the chain is tied to. Um, this is the top of the clock that's gonna pendulum, the, the whatever the thing at the bottom is called, maybe it's just called the pendulum. And now if I hit play, we can see that because gravity acts on it and the pendulum is offset, it will swing back and forth. Once we see that it works, we'll take a look at the settings and uh, play with it a little bit. Oh, I need gravity reactivated for that. So we'll go back into my enemy and we will turn back on dynamic so that gravity will act on my enemy, which will pull it down. And a distance 2D, how it's configured right now, it will keep the distance from the point to the object the same. It will always be equal. So it's like a, like a rod instead of a string where it can only uh, go in one direction. Now, if we go back and we take a look at a distance joint 2D, we have this enabled collision checkbox. We can check that and then it will actually collide with whatever game object that it's um, glued to. We have the connected rigid body. So if I wanted this to be, um, let's say, connected to the player at all times, I could take the player, drag it into this box, and now that pendulum is connected to the player. And just for good measure, we move that over and we can see, we can see that when I move, the enemy moves with me. So it's kind of like, um, you could do, you could use that to create some sort of force field. You could do that to create a spinning, like if you were creating a car game and you had this uh, weapon that swung around to injure other, uh, other cars, you could do that. If we set it to none, then it's just wherever this um, anchor point is. We also have an actual numbering, like X and Y coordinate for that anchor if you wanted to hard code it or pass in variables that allowed it to move. Um, we also have the auto configure distance. If we do that, then we can ignore this distance here where wherever this is, that distance number will adjust. Uh, we can do max distance only so that it can go closer to the anchor point, but not further away. And then break force, we have it set to infinity so that no matter how much force is applied to this object, that distance joint will never break. But if you want it to be like a tether ball where if you threw it hard enough, it broke and flew into the distance, you could do um, change this break force to a smaller number and then eventually that thing would break and it would fly off. So that's distance joint 2D. Build something really cool with this. Add it to your color bump, add it to, um, I don't know, you guys are way more creative than I am. Add it to something cool and I wanna shout out Maurice W from the Roseville location for showing me this, really cool. All right, any questions, guys? <laughs>